I was born and raised in Venezuela, Maracaibo, which is the second biggest city in, in Venezuela. And um, I moved here when I was 10 years old. And I've lived in Weston since. It all started like back in 99, before I was even born. Uh, my dad, he had two companies in Venezuela and he wanted to buy a house here in the US. And so we bought a house in the US in, in 1999 in Weston, Florida. And it was just a vacation house for, for 10 years. We would always come here, just vacation, bring family members, bring cousins. Everyone would go to the beach. But then um, things started getting worse in Venezuela. They uh, killed my grandpa at the, at the, like where he worked. They were threatening my brother to kill him as well. They were following my sisters. So my dad made the decision, like within a month, we were gonna have to move to the US and live here. My family was originally not from Venezuela. I have no Venezuelan blood. My mom was uh, born in Italy. My dad was born in Spain. And when it was like around the wars, um, both my grandparents decided to move to Venezuela, which was getting richer uh, because of oil. And it was supposed to be a big prospect country. And so a lot of Europeans moved to to like Latin America and Venezuela specifically. My Hispanic culture has I, honestly like, it's who I am. It has shaped me like to who I am today. Um, I moved here to Weston and it's very, uh, Weston's very Hispanic as well. There's a lot of Hispanics living there. Venezuela, Venezuelans, Cubans, Argentinians from all over the world. And honestly, like I moved here and even though I was living in the U.S. and I was still young, I, my values and my, my beliefs were still from my home country, from what I learned all those past years. So, you know, it's, it's who I am today. I'm still the same um, person because of how my uh, parents raised me. And, you know, they, they share those same beliefs with um, my whole family. And so they are trying to uh, bring me up the same. Some things that we feel like are worth celebrating or that, you know, we we try to always plan family things. We always try to keep the family close. We always try to eat together, even though we're all far apart. You know, my, my brother lives in Spain. My sister lives in Spain. So uh, my other sister lives in Texas. So we're all like all around the world. But we always try to come in, come together at least twice or three times a year so we can have like, you know, some family time and 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 bring back some old times that, that, how, on how we were raised. As we all know, there's a lot of Hispanics uh, living here in the U.S. Um, a lot came here with money. A lot came with no money at all. And they had to do a, like a, a big transition in their lives. So for me, like Hispanic Heritage Month, it means like uh, for all of us to come together and share our differences and learn from each other. And we can, uh, us Hispanic can learn from each other as well as other people that, are, that don't know anything about the Hispanics. They can learn from us and know a little bit about, about our background and just come together more as a community. From this month of celebration, I think a lot of people can take that, you know, a lot of us came here with nothing. Uh, a lot of us came here with a lot of issues and we tried leaving uh, our whole lives, our whole um, background, families, friends, everything, our houses um, to move here because where we were um, living was just not safe. It was just not somewhere where we could um, live our lives happily or or safe or with you know any resources that we need there, there was nothing so um, it's a big transition you know my parent my parents still don't want they don't want to move but um, they did what they did for us for us to be where we are and to to be something in the future and I'm forever grateful for that